film that we went to the drive-in. And... Today on Mega Movie Drive-In, we are cooking with a batch of Super Ape Serum, or something like that. The Neanderthal Man is a sci-fi horror jam brought to us by Global Productions in 1953 on June 19th. This is directed by E.A. DuPont and is not rated. And this is actually considered adult entertainment for back in the day. Okay, let's see what we have here today. The opening credits and title. The music is pretty intense. We get a monologue telling us that this is California and that California is... In brooding beauty, whose parallel one would have far to seek, stand California's high Sierras. Pretty. Yeah, no sh**. I lived there for a while. Anyway, looks like this doctor got his laboratory broken into, or something broke out of it. But this is Professor Clifford Groves, played by Robert Shane. Hey, 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 remember the giant claw? A bird as big as a battleship circled and attacked the plane. And this is his daughter, Jan, played by Joy Terry. He's pretty agitated with what happened and says, F I'm getting out of here. So, so far already, we have a lot of questions with this movie. In town, the locals are busting this hunter's balls because he claims to have seen this massive mountain lion. The hunter is Mr. Wheeler, played by, oh, it's Frank Dressler from The Wasp Woman. Well, it looks like we've got him. All right, we got two former guys coming back for this episode of Mega Movie Drive-In. Sweet. This is George Oaks, the local game warden, played by Robert Long. And the bartender is Charlie Webb, played by Lee Morgan. Oaks gets attacked on his way home. So, Oaks looks to go get help from a Dr. Ross Harkins, played by Rich Crane. Dang it, man, don't treat me like a harmless crackpot. He says he'll come and help him look for his big old cat. Dr. Ross gets into town looking for Oaks, but he's out and about. This is Nola, the bartender, played by Beverly Garland. She'll come back into play later. And this is Ruth, played by Doris Merrick. She's also heading the same way as Dr. Harkins because she's looking for the professor. That's her fiancé. Turns out, with Groves and Oaks not coming back till tomorrow, Joy decides to let them stay at her place that night. This is the housekeeper, played by Jorinda Quinn. She is unfortunately deaf and mute. When the professor returns early the next morning, he heads right into his lab. The next AM, everyone meets. Oaks tells the doctor that he still hasn't caught the giant cat on the run. So the professor kind of flips out about this and tells them pretty much that they don't need to hunt down and kill this beast. So I guess that answers the first question of where the monster came from. But they go out after it anyways. See that carcass? Faintly. And they kill it. Keep your sights on that clearing. That night, Ruth is DTF, but Groves isn't. I won't be laughed at anymore. And I would laugh at that hair too. I mean, I know it's not always the best, but I try. The professor tells Ruth that he's on to unlocking the link between man and his ancestors. So she thinks he's been working too hard, he's starting to lose it. So he kind of tells her to leave, but she dumps him. So the professor takes something, uh, and he turns into the Neanderthal man. So if you're confused with this movie already, pretty much what happened is Professor created the serum to bring back your historic genes, I guess, and he's all pissed off because the Doctor and Oaks killed his creation to prove that it really worked. So now he's testing it on himself to prove that it works, and we all know how that goes usually in these situations. Hey, at least he finally kills someone. So to untransform him, they just play the transformation backwards. I guess that works. Oak shows up at Grove's place to tell him they found a man dead, and they're gonna set out and try to find the beast that killed him. That night, the professor transforms again into it, and Harkin scopes out his lab while he's out and about. What he discovers is the professor's been experimenting on Cecilia. They kind of look like Gene Simmons and Kiss in the early 70s. In the meantime, the Neanderthal man kills another guy, which is some fellow that was out on a date with Nola who has taken dirty pictures of her. If you want to know why the movie has an adult theme label on it, this is the theme right here. Back in the day, this was some hot stuff. Anyway, after Groves kills the guy, he takes Nola away. Hello? Professor Groves? No, still asleep, I believe. Oh, here's Miss Groves. For the record, Groves did kick him out a couple days ago, and he's still hanging around. The girl winds up in front of Groves' place, and Harkins and Jan try to get some answers out of her. She tells them that an ape-like man killed her boyfriend, Back in town, Oaks and the bartender are firing up a posse to go find out what the fuck is fucking around this town. Harkins and Jan break into her dad's lab again, and this time they test his serum out on one of the cats, which escapes. Well, they put two and two together, and that's when they figure out that her father's been the guy that's been creating these giant monsters, and probably also the thing that's running around town killing everybody. But they need to get to him before the posse does, because they are going to kill him. They figure he's going for Ruth, but when they get there, he's already grabbed her. The posse ends up cornering him and Ruth in a cave. 
Groves gets away and runs into the giant cat that Jan and the doctor had made. But the posse ends up shooting both of them, killing two of them. Two birds and one stone, I guess. Hardens explains to Oaks what happened and what's been going on just before the professor dies in his bed. The end. This one had a really confusing beginning, and at first I wasn't sure what was going on, and then like everyone kind of just goes their own way and comes back, and there's a lot of quick little cut scenes. And you know what though? This one really wasn't too, too bad. I just wish the monster effects were a little bit better. The transformation scene is cool, but the final monster kind of looks like shit. You could tell they were trying to do what the Wolfman did prior, but even though the Wolfman was many years before this one, it still kind of looks better than this one. But the plot isn't horrible. I just wish it was a little more straightforward maybe. Well, we got one more to go after this, guys, in this season. I think for our last one, we're finally going to do a movie that's in color. 